Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at a technique in SQL called the self-join. And I should really emphasize that this is a technique in SQL. It's not a keyword like the keywords we've been looking at in previous videos. In this case, self-join is not anything you can type into SQL. It's rather just a type of join where you're going to join a table on itself. And in the joins video, we looked at the usual case of joins where you're going to join one table on a different table. And that's typically what you're doing. But there's also very valid use cases for joining a table on itself. And you usually want to do that when you're trying to make comparisons between a certain row in the table and other rows within the same table. So you're comparing elements of the same table. In our case, we're going to be using a self-join on the job data. So I remember job data contains information about employees at a university, their name, their job, and their wage. So let's say we're trying to answer this question. Let's say we're trying to answer what is the average difference in wage between two employees. So just to kind of uh, expand on what that means, we have a bunch of employees at our university. We're interested in if I take the absolute value of wage difference between every two pair of employees that are possible, then what's the average of that difference? Basically, I'm trying to get an idea of how different are wages at my university. So this is going to require a self-join because we're going to need to compare every single person in the employees data set or the job data rather with every single other person in the job data and take the difference of their wages. So we're going to do it in two steps. The first is we're going to perform a self-join of the job table on itself. So this looks a little complex, but we're going to start from the from clause. So we do from job data, aliasing it as J1, comma, which I'll explain in a second, another copy of job data, aliasing that as J2. Now this comma is just a shorthand for writing inner join here. Notice that whether I write inner join, left join, right join, or outer join here, it doesn't actually make a difference because all these things are happening on the same table on itself. So they all mean the same thing. So I can just do inner join, which is shorthand just putting a comma here to make things cleaner. So now I'm doing a join of job data on itself, one copy called J1, one copy called J2. And I'm putting a where clause. I'm putting where the uh, name in the first copy is not equal to the name in the second copy. Why am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that because I don't want to compare an employee against themselves because the wage difference there is going to be zero. But that shouldn't really factor into my calculation, right? Because I don't care about an employee's wage being same as the same employee. I really want to compare the employee against every other employee in my data. So that's why I have this where condition. Now before I go further, using these two conditions, how many rows are going to be in the resulting data frame? There's 5,000 employees in my data, so job data has 5,000 rows. When I do a join on another copy of job data, I'm actually doing, let me see if I can create a cell right here. Okay, so just do a quick math calculation. 5,000 rows in my job data times 5,000 because I'm comparing every employee against themselves minus 5,000 because I'm not considering cases of comparing an employee against themselves. So I get a total of, what is this number? It's massive, 24, almost 25 million, right? Almost 25 million results in the final data frame. So we can see that doing the self-join can get really, really, really massive. So we need to be careful about those kind of things. So I'm gonna delete that. Now I'm going to limit on just the first 20 results because I don't want to print out all 25 million things there. And the select statement looks like there's a lot going on, but looking through it, I'm just getting the name from the first copy of the job data frame as name one, the name from the second copy of the job data frame as name two. So this is just giving me the name of the two employees I'm comparing each time. The job from the first job data frame as job one, job from the second data frame as job two. And the last thing is the absolute difference in the wages between these two employees I'm comparing. And I'm going to give that a friendly name as abs wage diff. So in all, here's the first 20 results. We see in this case, we're comparing employees ZPG, whatever, against all of the other employees in the job data. And we're just looking at the first 20 comparisons here. A couple things to note here. Uh, we never see the employee ZPG in name two because we have the where clause protecting against comparing an employee with themselves. And we see we have the job of the first employee, the job of the second employee, and the absolute difference in their wages. Step two is very simple. In step two, we are simply getting rid of that limit because we'll be doing an average on every single uh, absolute wage difference we get back. So we see that we're doing a join here. We still have the condition protecting against comparing an employee with themselves. And then we're just going to get the average 
of all of the absolute wage differences, and we're going to call that average absolute wage diff. Now, this is a statement that takes a while to run. I'm not going to run it right now because I don't want to wait. Uh, but when I ran this, it took a solid 15 to 20 seconds because of just the massive size of the join data frame. Remember, it had about 25 million rows that it had to take the average of, so that could take a very long time. Uh, it came back with about 58 cents. So the average absolute wage difference of any two employees in my data is around 58 cents. Now to add another layer here to compare this number uh, with some other numbers, we want to see how does this wage gap compare with wage gaps within each job. So if you remember in our job data, we had five different jobs like dining, library, um, and three others. We want to know what is the average absolute wage difference within each job. Is it higher or is it lower than the average absolute wage difference across just everyone, uh, regardless of what their job is? So for this, we're going to need to get a slightly more complicated, but I'm going to walk you through it again. Uh, it begins the same. We join on two copies of job data. We still have this first where to protect against comparing an employee with themselves. It's just that we have another condition. We also enforce that job one is equal to job two. So maybe I can create a cell here to better explain that. Uh, before we do the and job one equals job two, we might have two rows in our self join data that looks like dining uh, and dining and then dining and let's say library. So this is uh, comparing an employee whose job is dining with another employee whose job is dining and comparing an employee whose job is dining with an employee whose job is library. Now putting the second and statement, enforcing that the first employee's job is equal to the second employee's job, we get rid of the second one because their jobs are not equal. So we don't return that result in the final data frame. This way, we're only considering pairs of employees who have the same job. So we're comparing, uh, we're comparing all the dining employees with each other, comparing all the library employees with each other so that we can get these results about absolute wage differences within each job. Now for right here, I'm just going to limit to the first 20 because even though I'm doing this subsetting, it's still going to be a very massive data frame and I don't want to print the whole thing out right here. And the rest is pretty much the same. I print out the first employee's name, the second employee's name, the first employee's job. Um, actually, I don't need to print out the second employee's job because I've enforced the jobs are the same. So I just need to print out job once. And I print out the average, uh, the absolute difference in wages between these two employees. And here's what I get. So I get something that looks very similar to what I had above here, but it's just that now I'm enforcing that every pair of employees I consider are within the same job and I get the absolute difference in their wages. Now, the very last thing I need to do here is just take uh, group this entire thing by job. So we see that these are all dining uh, employees, but uh, if I printed out more, I would get pairs of AV employees, pairs of library employees, but I wanna group this whole data frame by job. And then within each group, I would like to take the average of the absolute wage differences. So to walk you through the statement, uh, this part's the same. I just do a self join of job data on itself. I enforce that I'm not comparing the same employees with each other. I enforce that I'm only comparing employees that have the same job. And then I group by job. So now I have these five groups of employees within the same job. Uh, and then I print out the job itself which is legal because I grouped by the job. And I print out the average absolute difference in wages. So um, in a human kind of way, what I'm doing is I'm taking a group of employees, let's say dining employees, and then I'm going to say, what's the absolute difference in wage between every pair of dining employees? And then I'm taking the average of all those absolute differences. And this is my result. So we see that it's around 33 cents. So uh, what that means is within each job, there's on average a 33 cent difference between any two employees' wages. Compare that with, uh, before I took job into account, there was a 58 cent difference between any two employees. So what that means, the story is that within every job, the wages are much closer together than if I look at all employees, irrespective of job, which makes sense. Hopefully that was helpful to understand how to do a self-join in SQL, because for me, it was not something intuitive. It's kind of hard to think about joining a data frame on itself. Um, compared to joining a data frame on a different data frame. But if, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them below in the comments. And until next time.